Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I got the Bitcoin chart up here right now trading at $20,400. Again, chopping sideways, not too much movement to the upside or the downside. The one thing though that I am really paying attention to is if we make lower lows. If you guys remember, I did a video on Marin's prediction. And historically, Marin has been fairly accurate when predicting the Bitcoin downtrend of 2021 over here. She predicted it in January, and she said by May of 2021, we would see a downtrend, which we did. We accumulated, and then she said by uh, July, we would see an uptrend, and we did. Now, she did the same kind of thing this year, um, marking the dates May 10th, 2022, which was in and around here, where we did see a downtrend, accumulation, and October the 28th which just recently passed, which is in and around here. So my assumption, I'm hopeful, we are going to continue to make a move for the upside. Of course, if this happens for Bitcoin, it will likely happen for the rest of the market. So then it gets me thinking, is Marin correct? Is Marin predicting the future? Uh, and so this is why. If we make a new low, I think this whole thing is null and void. Crap, garbage, good luck. But if we do not make a new low then I think, well, then I know Marin is definitely in my good books. So just keeping an eye on that, particularly uh, XRP, not too much to write home about XRP right now, trading at 45.3, so about 45 cents, uh, still chopping sideways along with the rest of the market. The good news about XRP is uh, on the longer time frame, it is still looking like it is forming that bullish pendant pattern. So hopefully another move to the upside is in the future for XRP. We're trading on fairly low volume. I mean, we did see that higher volume spike back in September when XRP did rally from the low 30s all the way to 55 cents, give or take. By and large, though, nothing really big to talk about in the market. I did see this, guys, from Mr. Clean X here, Working Money Channel. What is this in the Apple App Store? Now, I haven't uh, taken the time to actually investigate this, but take a look at this. Ripple, connect with Campus. And uh, as you guys can see here, the Ripple font in this, uh, if you can see it here, the Ripple font looks very similar, looks identical to uh, what Ripple uses. But the logo, three purple circles that look conspicuously like the Ripple logo. So is this an offshoot of the same Ripple company making waves in how students connect? Check out what is happening, interact and chat. I mean, it seems kind of off-brand for Ripple. However, um, you know, nothing surprises me these days, considering the fact that the XRPL, building on the XRPL, moving out into all kinds of verticals, maybe this is some kind of chatting app that is featured on the blockchain. I do not know. I'm going to have to look into that further, but I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Clean X here. It was one of the last things that I researched today, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to throw it in the video. Interesting. If anybody has any uh, more information on this, please do put it down in the comment section, or you guys can tag me on Twitter. Of course, I'm at WorkingMoneyCH on Twitter. Uh, gonna keep moving, guys. Ripple Partner Air Wallets has now launched installment payment options for Asian shoppers. This is coming from Matthew L-I-N-Y. So more demand for payments in Asia. Air Wallets, a leading global fintech company and a Ripple partner, has partnered with Asian BNPL giant Atome to launch an installment payment option for its merchant customers. Under the partnership, Air Wallets merchants can offer a buy now, pay later option to shoppers in Indonesia, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Malaysia. It is noteworthy that the announcement marks Air Wallets' first partnership with a buy now, pay later payment provider. Uh, following the partnership, more shoppers will be encouraged to patronize Air Wallets' merchants, thus boosting the revenue of these businesses. So Air Wallets, a Ripple partner, again, utilizing DLT technology, looking to enter the retail uh, payment uh, market when it comes to shopping in the Asian region and uh, focusing on Indonesia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia. Before the announcement, Air Wallets offered its merchants multi-currency card-based payment solutions through MasterCard, Visa, and UnionPay across selected Southeast Asian countries and Hong Kong. Commenting on the development, here's Arnold Chan's comment. Uh, he is Air Wallex's Southeast Asia and Hong Kong general manager. Here's what he said. We want to give businesses access to all the benefits of BNPL, which is buy now, pay later, uh, which will not only help them increase revenues, but also create a more seamless customer experience for the longer term that will enable them to unlock new market opportunities. So these payment providers, right, the ones that have figured out a better mousetrap, the ones that have decided early on, you know, in some cases, I believe uh, Air Wallets was one of those Ripple partners earlier on, uh, you know, they're they're realizing, OK, we have a, a better service to provide to our customers. So you as a customer, how can you benefit from this? And maybe we'll give you some possibilities of how you could benefit from this to, uh, you know, boost up your bottom line. In turn, that benefits us because we get more business. 
and the snowball effect continues. So we're seeing it in uh, slow motion. I mean, it feels a little slow sometimes, considering we've been waiting many years for some of these uh, developments to occur. But now we're seeing it, guys. Air Wallets also looking to roll out uh, their BNPL payment option for other Asian countries. So they're already focusing on Thailand, Japan, and the Philippines. This is great news. BNPL is becoming an increasingly popular payment choice among shoppers today. So that's the other thing. They're uh, focusing on uh, the fast-growing Gen Z and Millennial customer segment. With this partnership, millions of customers across the region can now shop and pay through flexible, deterred payments at Air Wallet's merchants. You know what that also means? People are making less money and need to buy now, pay later. Economy-wise, that's not a great thing. People are getting poorer. Of course, the powers that be have something to do with this. But, uh, you know, just in terms of what uh, Airwalks is providing to their customers, a new development utilizing RippleNet. So in that respect, more utility to the XRPL, which will eventually drive more demand. Now, guys, speaking of more demand, Michael Branch posted this. OK, an article from you today outlining how former Ripple CTO Stefan Thomas is now working on an XRP powered micropayments network. So if you guys don't know, Stefan Thomas uh, is the CEO of Coil. And he's taken to Twitter to announce that he's working on a peer-to-peer micropayments network. It would initially use the XRP cryptocurrency for settling transactions. I've got the tweet thread up here. Stefan Thomas posted this, okay? I'm coding again, new project, which is called DASI. And uh, he he adds some bullet points to this tweet thread. Interledger peer-to-peer micropayment network. Uh, direct access to ILP without gatekeepers. Settlement using crypto. He says he's going to be using XRP first and then eventually uh, integrating BTC, ETH, and more over time. And so there is a live stream Interledger Summit, which is happening on November 12th, and the launch is 2023, uh, which is to be expected. Some of this stuff takes time. This is the most ambitious personal project I've undertaken since Bitcoin JS back in 2010. What do you think? Can I pull it off? He asks. I guess we'll see. Follow for updates on how this turns out. And tune into the live stream to learn more. So Uh, I have the link here, guys, to the live stream if you guys want to click on that. I will link this in the description of the video. It's not happening until uh, November 12th, though. So you have uh, a couple of weeks, uh, 10 days uh, before that live stream. Going to be an interesting project for sure. I wanted to thank Stefan and Michael Branch just for posting that. Considering we are seeing more XRPL development, uh, is it any surprise that a new Europeg stablecoin is now integrated with the XRP ledger? Remember, guys, these are all things that are driving value not only to the XRP ledger, which will be more favorable and more likely adopted throughout the years by other companies and banks and financial institutions. It also inadvertently drives more demand to the native token, the native cryptocurrency, which is XRP, which is what we all hold. So Ripple XRP ledger integrates NFTs, which I just talked about the other day. And uh, now the Euro Stasis stablecoin has been integrated. So Ripple XRP Ledger will now support non-fungible tokens, as I mentioned. That update occurred on October the 31st. With the new development, developers can create unique digital assets on the blockchain network without affecting its network security or efficiency. Uh, Top executives at Ripple like Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz described this event as a milestone for the ecosystem. So if these guys are coming out and they're saying, you know, this is a big effing deal, an incredible milestone for the XRP Ledger community, I think that's something that we should be making note of. Um, because this is going to move Ripple into new verticals. Tokenization is not new to the XRPL, but it presents a key milestone for developers and creators to tokenize any asset and build innovative Web3 products with utility. Okay, so this opens the door for so much more, so many more possibilities with, uh, with regards to development. I know I'm not a developer and I'm sure many of you guys aren't developers either, but you know, the, the concept, when we think of the possibilities, okay, And, you know, our puny brains can probably only imagine a handful of possibilities that could be developed on the XRPL. Well, these developers and um, whoever, entrepreneurs, developers, they have so many ideas what could be and what will be produced on the XRP ledger, especially with new innovations like Web3, um, that, you know, the, 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 the possibilities really are endless. I just get excited because, you know, the more that is put on there, the more different avenues they pursue, the more demand there will be. And the more XRP price will rise eventually once there is more demand for that token. So the new standard introduces native NFTs on the XRP ledger to represent unique assets, along with efficient, secure operations to enumerate transfers and hold such tokens. So I've already talked a little bit about this, um, but with regards to integrating 
the Stasis Euro stablecoin. This is a separate development. The Europeg stablecoin Stasis Euro has been integrated into Ripple's XRP ledger. Stasis uh, says its decision to integrate on XRPL was because of its significant benefits, such as advanced scalability, which is exactly what these banks, financial institutions, and uh, certain governments are going to want to see, are going to need to have, because you can't just assume that the economy is going to stay the same size for decades and decades, increased speed and lowered costs. Uh, yours, which is, uh, I guess, the stablecoin uh, ticker, is an Ethereum-based stablecoin pegged to the euro. So Ethereum-based pegged to the euro, but guys, it's going to be offered and integrated on the XRP ledger. Uh, Stasis uh, CEO Gregory Klumov said the move would help grow the adoption of EURS. He said it will solidify our asset for the next cycle of stablecoin market adoption. Our ongoing partnership will focus on exploring the newly emerged opportunities of XRP to enable a better financial inclusion, as well as stablecoin infrastructures and services. So understanding XRPL adoption, this is what is ultimately giving their stablecoin uh, the ability to do the things that they want it to do. It's the back end monster that is really going to make their stablecoin stick out, going to make it unique, going to make it usable. And so, you know, there are other blockchain companies that are doing the same thing, just not as good as Ripple. Meanwhile, these developments are yet to see a positive uh, reflection in XRP price, of course, um, because we're just not seeing the utility at scale yet. These are all pieces of news that are in their infancy, their introductions, but we're just not seeing it at scale, and that's why we're not seeing the price rise. Right now, we're only seeing the price rise based on a spec market, but that's okay because we can make money there too. Anyway, wanted to thank Spiritual Warlord for pointing that out. The Cryptic Poet also found something interesting. MoneyGram introduces new crypto services enabling customers to buy, sell, and hold cryptocurrencies via their new app. Hmm. So as you guys know, these guys are now XLM integrated, okay? They did have a partnership with Ripple back in 2019. Of course, the lawsuit happened, and um, my thought is they dissolved the partnership because of the lawsuit. Soon after, they did decide to merge and uh, partner up with um, with uh, Stellar. And so now they're offering crypto services, enabling customers to buy, sell, and hold crypto uh, via their app. So this is, again, par for the course of where we're going to see a lot of these companies move, and they're all moving in tandem because they don't want to be left behind. So MoneyGram, a global leader in the evolution of digital P2P payments, today announced the launch of a new service enabling customers to buy, sell, and hold crypto via their mobile app. This new and innovative feature gives MoneyGram customers in nearly all U.S. states and the District of Columbia the ability to trade and store Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin by using the company's leading mobile application. This is the latest crypto-related service launch from a company bringing real-world cryptocurrency and blockchain use cases to life uh, from on-slash-off-ramp services for digital wallets through partnerships uh, with CoinMe, Stellar, and Gcoin to cross-border settlement through Circle's USDC coin to the new ability to buy and store crypto simply by using its app. MoneyGram is pioneering cross-border payment innovation and blockchain-enabled settlement. So, you know, again, to the point of if cryptocurrency rallies, if people are getting poorer, well, what is the mathematical equation there? Let's say the economy just keeps getting worse. And let's say, you know, next year, whenever it happens to be, I'm not even, it doesn't even really matter. Um, let's say cryptocurrency continues to rally. Let's say we're at that time now where we're about to see another pop. Well, what is going to happen? The same thing that happened back in 2020. People are going to put their money into cryptocurrency and some people are going to get lucky and some people are not. Ultimately, we did see a huge rally throughout 2020 and 2021. And then by November of 2021, we did see that dip. We did see that correction. And uh, that's where we're at now. But the point I'm trying to make is people are catching on. And because there are now more possibilities uh, for on-ramping, for not just retail, but institutional, more money is going to be poured into this. Uh, so more retail customers are also going to get into crypto. But if you're a newbie, as you know, during the first bull run, I learned my lesson up here. If you're a newbie and you don't take profits off the table, what happens? Well, you might buy up here. And then this happens. You're thinking to yourself, oh, we're going to see another 10,000%. But sure enough, that does not happen. You see maybe another two or 300%. The prices go down and now you're underwater. So now you're holding a bunch of useless cryptocurrency, at least in your eyes. You're maybe if you're a newbie and you don't have any um, context, you're considering it useless crypto. Well, now what? Now you can use your crypto to pay for things because companies like MoneyGram have introduced these types of services. And I think this is a coordinated effort. I, I do seriously think that. I think the powers that be realize more people are going to get into crypto, but there are going to be a lot of people that crap the bed 
And so we should at least give them an outlet if they want to use their crypto to pay for things so that they can give it to us and we can accumulate crypto when the price is low. Not only that, it is going to be the best time to accumulate more crypto when the market is depressed again in the next cycle. This is likely when people will decide that they don't want their crypto anymore. Basically, the absolute worst time to give up your cryptocurrency is when the prices are low and depressed. So, you know, when we're hearing this type of news, um, this is what's going through my head. I don't know if you guys have any other opinions on that. Meanwhile, Danelle Dixon, so the CEO of Stellar, who is partnered with MoneyGram, she just came out and said this, the CFTC became the regulator for digital assets. There will be a definition of a security, whether cryptocurrencies are a security. And she even gives a timeline on this, guys. Listen to this clip here. What, what, what do you see uh, coming out next? If you think about crypto regulation going along the lines of what we saw with internet phase one, phase two, phase three, what do you think we're gonna see next and how might that affect how your companies uh, uh, operate going forward? I think domestically we're gonna see stablecoin legislation. That's the very first thing. It's the easiest thing. It's actually super hard because you have banks that push back against it because they don't want anybody out there except for them issuing the assets, which I think is wrong by the way. Uh, but you're gonna, we're going to still see that. That'll come together. It'll be bipartisan. There's already three bills right now that are pending in different um, in the House and the Senate side. So I think we'll see that come out. I think that we'll also then see, um, I'm hoping that we'll see the CFTC become sort of the regulator for digital assets. Uh, and there'll be a definition, and this is going to take a year, but there'll be a definition of a security and how whether these digital assets, whether uh, cryptocurrencies are securities. That is crucial for us to have here in the United States because other countries will follow. And right now there are so many folks in Alex's business from the financial services side that are afraid to enter the digital asset space because of the fact that they don't know if these are securities. So I think we'll see that again, it's gonna take another year or so. You know, the CEOs of these companies generally know what is happening behind closed doors. So her year timeline, I would take pretty seriously. Also, the fact that she's coming out and saying the CFTC will become the regulator for digital assets. Maybe there's some murmurings behind the scenes suggesting that, you know what? Because these new definitions for securities are coming out, the SEC is no longer going to have jurisdiction. And of course, Stellar has a vested interest in this considering their cryptocurrency is very similar to that of XRP. And, um, you know, I would not be surprised if we see the XLM token uh, move in tandem with XRP once we see uh, a positive verdict from the Ripple SEC lawsuit. Right now, uh, XLM is trading at about 11 cents, 10.8 down here, still accumulating. But again, I think we could see a pop uh, once we get this positive news. So a prediction, possibly CFTC to become the regulator for digital assets in the United States because the security definition is going to be different and um, cryptocurrencies may or may not fall within that definition. An interesting perspective here from Danelle Dixon, the CEO of Stellar. And a newly discovered document here, guys, problems with the blockchain technology introduction into the economy of Russia. Russia, obviously very secretive. We know they are working on their BRIC system to enable payments with their allies to subvert the US dollar, to subvert SWIFT, to subvert the sanctions that have been put, uh, that have been imposed on some of these countries over the years. Well, Nathan Price here on Twitter posted this, Russia Ripple OK. This is from uh, the Social and Behavioral Sciences Department, the European Proceedings of Social and Behavioral Sciences Department, International Conference on Finance, Entrepreneurship and Technologies in the Digital economy. So taking a look at the Russian Federation, if you guys don't remember a few months ago, maybe even a year ago now, uh, we did uncover some uh, documentation. Foreign and Russian experience of blockchain digitization of central banks, financial and technology companies. There was a whole report that was uh, from 2020 where they talk about this. In this report, they actually mentioned the use of XRP for transfers. So use, of, uh, use for XRP uh, transfers or equivalents of fiat currencies issued by each participant, the national bank. So just kind of outlining what uh, in 2018, the Russian banks Novosibirsk uh, and their innovative laboratory, they conducted research on testing the possibility of cross-border settlements using the Ripple platform. Again, this was back from 2018. This document was from 2020, uh, but they talk about XRP in here, development of a procedure for determining cross rates for the international currency of Ripple XRP when deciding to use XRP in interstate settlements. So this was big news coming out of Russia. We really hadn't heard too much about Russia at that time. Fast forward to today and guys, we've got even more information. So just back to this document in the abstract, the article is devoted to the analysis of use of blockchain technologies in the modern digital economy in the world and in Russia. 
A brief definition of the blockchain and the possibilities of using this technology in a system of modern economic and financial relations is given. Among the outlined circle of problems, the following are considered. The possibilities of using Bitcoin in the shadow economy, the difficulties of taxing the mining and trading of cryptocurrencies, fraudulent activities related to projects of initial coin offerings, uh, the lack of a steady course in mass speculation, low profitability of cryptocurrency mining due to the current electricity tariffs. The circle of the main problems of the industry is consistently highlighted and possible solutions are proposed. Special attention is paid and the possibilities of XRP token use as a payment currency bridge and as a spam protection tool on the basis of the Ripple network is also mentioned, guys, in this report. The important advantages of using blockchain for the further development of the digital economy of individual states and the world as a whole are emphasized. Now, this document was from last year, but I had not heard of this. It kind of leads on this original document from 2020, where uh, the Russian Federation, the Bank of Russia, were already looking at cross-border settlements utilizing the Ripple platform. Now, a year later, this document also surfaces. So could the Russian Federation be working on something Ripple related? It certainly is a possibility. Of course, with all these new developments on the XRPL, it only seems likely that XRP price will rally in time with this mass adoption. And guys, I'm feeling this way. Payments were just one vertical. We were so laser focused on payments at the beginning, but this is going to explode beyond global payments. And as Danell Dixon puts it, you know, the rest of the world will follow suit as the United States government purportedly will be giving the CFTC regulatory rule over cryptocurrencies. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.